All right, so in this clip, I will be talking about sustainable development goal uh, number 14. It can be seen perhaps on the surface as a challenging goal for business to make sense of or business school students to make sense of. But actually, I hope to be able to show that there are a lot of linkages to uh, business activity and also relevance for business school uh, students to engage and understand deeper the meaning of the Sustainable Development Goal, its targets and its uh, indicators. Uh, globally, the um, marine and coastal resources uh, are very important for industry. It has been estimated that three trillion dollars uh, or about five percent of the global GDP can be traced uh, to mar marine ecosy ecosystems as such. And fisheries, for example, em employ almost 200 million people uh, around the world. So it's a very important uh, source of economic activity. We'll be going through a little bit of what kind of challenges and perhaps also a little bit on what kind of innovative uh, activities we see around the world related uh, to SDG uh, 14. The first target says that by 2025 we should prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all uh, kinds. I think one example and one very striking example of the kind of marine pollution challenges that mankind faces today is the example of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is basically an, an island the size of Texas or large, uh, larger of plastic debris uh, floating around in the Pacific uh, Ocean. But at the same time as we see these uh, mounting challenges, we also see new innovative approaches in terms of how should we be cleaning up uh, these, these kinds of marine uh, pollution. And a very good example of this is the Dutch initiative Ocean Cleanup Foundation with its founder Boyan Slat, who has been creating an, a very innovative uh, product or, or solution of how to uh, clean up uh, these plastic uh, debris flo floating around in, in, in the sea. And we have attached some material for you uh, to, to look closer at the example of Ocean Cleanup Foundation and, and their solution. But of course, the role of business and the role of organization at large needs to be more than simply sort of reactive approaches. The, the challenge for business is really how can we create closed-loop systems? How can we create uh, follow-up in the supply chain? How can we manage the supply chain to the extent that we cut down on the plastic that, that our production causes either by end use or indeed uh, by all the, the, the plastic material that we use uh, for packaging all our, our, our product at, at large. So there is immense room for inno innovation and innovative approaches around this. And closed loop systems at large, of course, is, is a concept that is highly talked about in, in research currently and very uh, central, I would say, also in, in a business school uh, to, to understand no matter which subject uh, you, are, you are in. And then we have the, the issue of overfishing. Uh, when industrialization has reached a certain scale, we also start to see new, very effective um, sort of fishing techniques that, that were being implemented. Deep sea trawling has proven very sort of unsustainable. So the question is really also how to engage with other SDGs such as no hunger or ending hu hunger at large, when at the same time we should be very mindful of the consequences of, for example, uh, over uh, f fishing and how can we fish in, in a sustainable manner, how can we uh, regulate and, and implement regulation so that illegal practices are not being used and how can companies ensure that in their supply chain there happens no overfishing, no illegal uh, fishing as, as such. That puts a great uh, challenge to again uh, 
managing uh, the, the, the supply chain for the companies. Uh, and one of the examples that we will be using here in, in this video is actually one of the partner organizations or partner companies of, of Hanken School of Economics here in, in Finland, and that is a company called DROP, and we will be interviewing its uh, founder, Amanda Sundell, who will be talking more about what the relation between DROP and, and SDG 14 and also innovation at, at large, what, what those are. Hi, so my name is Amanda. Um, I'm the founder of DROP. Um, so it's now been three years uh, since DROP started um, here in Finland. Um, and before that, um, I didn't have any background in entrepreneurship um, or business either. Um, my personal background is I studied social sciences. Um, then I worked with international organizations for a while. Um, and then I decided I wanted to um, see if I could do something on my own um, to finance other people who are doing really great stuff. Um, so then we started DROP. Obviously, um, it's sort of saving the Baltic Sea. Uh, so basically supporting efforts uh, for the environmental rehabilitation of the Baltic Sea. Um, I think it's an issue that most Finns agree is important. The Baltic Sea is in a, a really poor state. Uh, it's the most polluted ocean in the world. Um, and I think that's not something we're particularly proud of here. Um, and also it's a, a personal concern for me. I've always uh, lived close to the sea, spent my time um, on the Baltic Sea in the archipelago um, and sort of seen the, the very concrete changes um, in the sort of environmental status, if you will. Um, so it's really just something I'm quite passionate about and according to opinion polls as well, as I uh, forgot to mention, more than 62% of Finns uh, are ready to pay more taxes uh, to see a clean sea. But then they find it hard to participate themselves sometimes because of maybe lack of time or um, too many interests um, that you want to be involved in. So, so I just wanted to do something uh, that would make it easy for people to participate. Um, so DROP, actually, uh, we have two products um, at the moment. Uh, we have DROP water, uh, which is spring water from southern Ostrobotnia that we sell here in Finland. And then we have reusable water bottles, um, very lightweight that you can carry uh, on everywhere and, and refill um, as you need. Um, but when it comes to the spring water, um, the market is quite big and growing in Finland. So every year we consume more than 100 million liters of spring water. 18 liters per person, um, which often surprises people um, in Finland because we do have very clean tap water as well, of course. Um, but on this sizable market, um, both of the market leaders are um, international corporations um, and they have their own uh, logic of, of working. Um, so I wanted to offer um, a more sustainable alternative on this market um, that also then, of course, donates 100% of of its profits to um, environmental projects. So you, you know you're supporting a cause. Um, but also, for instance, we work with a, a family-owned um, company um, that has two springs that they manage. Uh, they work uh, very sustainably. Um, they've done this carbon audit with an independent consulting um, firm. Um, so they're able to track their emissions, um, they're able to reduce them according to, to a plan, and they have. Um, they also um, offset uh, their emissions, so they support clean water and clean energy projects in Kenya. Uh, that was very important to me. Uh, also, DROP works together with Opel, so we have a logistics partnership where we do all of our direct deliveries um, fueled by biogas. So that's also emissions neutral. Uh, we run on domestic biogas, uh, so basically waste. Um, so those are some of the things that we've done to be as sustainable as, as possible. And then I don't know if um, there are international students, but it's probably worth mentioning that in Finland the recycling uh, program works extremely well as well. So 95% uh, of PET bottles will be recycled and they actually are used. So the loop functions, for instance, we have um, Alco, our um, alcohol <laughs> monopoly, uh, who do their carrier bags, sort of, you know, reusable carrier bags. Uh, each one of those is three PET bottles. Uh, we also have chains like Hesburger fast food chain uh, who have done their work clothes 
um, out of recycled PET bottles. Um, and there are other cases like that as well. Our main partner is the Baltic Sea Action Group. Uh, we've uh, done what they call a Baltic Sea, a Baltic sea commitment, so a commitment uh, for the Baltic Sea with them. Uh, the Baltic Sea Action Group is uh, one of the biggest foundations um, in Finland working for a cleaner Baltic Sea. They're active all around the Baltic Sea, so in the entire region, uh, but they're based in Finland. Um, so that's a foundation. And then we have a research project that we started together <coughs> with the University of Helsinki. Um, and there it's uh, a lot about awareness raising. Uh, we're trying to showcase uh, what it actually looks like below the surface um, and uh, just get people excited about uh, the Baltic Sea um, and then obviously supporting very important sort of scientific um, breakthroughs as well. Um, but I don't think we're definite. Um, I think if there's a very interesting project where um, private um, actors were involved, uh, that could be very interesting to us as well. The research project that we started with uh, University of Helsinki, there was another private uh, fund that um, matched our financing. Uh, so we were able to start a slightly bigger uh, from the beginning. So we're quite open uh, to cooperation. I think for us, the crucial thing is um, getting results. So we want to see someone with a proven track record um, of doing something for the Baltic Sea. And then, and then we're happy to be involved in that. Thank you.